What's happening, people? The Poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. And here you see one of my gaming setups. Yep, one of them. This is one by uh, EK Fluid Gaming right here. It's their Vanquish 295. I also have the Logitech X52 Pro HOTUS. HOTUS stands for Hands-On Throttle and Stick. And then, of course, the uh, keyboard here, full-size keyboard, function keys, number pad. I need that for games like Elite Dangerous. And then a tablet here to allow me to use a, a system called Game Glass to actually integrate the tablet features with games like Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen. So it's a really nice immersive uh, space sim setup. This PC is definitely a beast. Uh, it's, like I said, the Vanquish 295, which also includes a 5950X, 64 gigs of Trident Z Neo RAM, and of course an RTX 3090, because of course. Now this is inside of the O11 Dynamic. This is a really nice high airflow case along with great third party water cooling support. And the biggest third party water cooling supporter of this case is EK. So what I wanna do with this video is kind of show you some of the basics of water cooling because I'm gonna be doing a lot of content with packs and a lot more like high-end water cooling content with, uh, actually you can see a lot of my past videos of like taking apart a GPU, putting a water block on it and all that stuff. But I have a lot of viewers out there who are always asking, hey, can you go over some of the basics? So this is gonna be a multi-part, very short video right here, but multi-part series of some of the basics for water cooling. So one of the first things that I always say is if you wanna get into water cooling, choose your case wisely because the case is kind of a representation of your personality, who you are as a PC gamer or PC enthusiast, whoever you might be in terms of your you know, category. So this case is very, very popular, especially on TikTok, it like blew up because of its functionality. That third party water cooling support and all this space to have all kinds of very large air coolers, very large uh, graphics processors, um, allowed it to be just kind of showcased all over the place in many different ways. There's also the O11 Dynamic Mini. Check out my YouTube videos on the O11 Dynamic Mini, but the support is gonna be slightly different with that because of the size. For example, ugh, this is the EK distribution plate for it, and it also includes a D5, D5 pump right here. Very powerful D5 pump. I loved building in the O11 Dynamic Mini with this thing. Lots of ports, so you can be really, I guess, unique in terms of how you build your system. So if you want to build in the O11 Dynamic Mini, specifically the Snow Edition, which I really love to look for, you might want something like this. Now, this distro plate comes with the Fluid Gaming line and it's really nice. And you can really customize this even further if you want. You don't need to because look at this thing, it's beautiful. Um, this is PETG tubing in here. Um, I do prefer when I'm doing my own custom builds, uh, acrylic tubing because it looks a little bit more like glass but it does take longer to use. So th th those are some of the things that I'll get into into you know, future videos. Another thing is, I have it around here somewhere. I lost it, be right back. And I found it. I wanted to show you this. This is the CPU water block. A lot of PC systems like this will have the CPU water block as kind of the focus for the look, but also the performance. Not all CPU water blocks are created equal. There's some very low end ones out there, some very high end ones. The temperature differences are just like very low end air coolers compared to very high end air coolers, all right? So this one is something I've used many, many times. It, it is also by EK, it's the EK Velocity CPU water block. You can get them specifically for Intel, specifically for AMD, specifically for Threadripper systems. So make sure you're doing your research to find out which one you actually need for your system. And there's metal differences as well. There's aluminum, which this system is an aluminum based system. So the CPU water block in this system, the Vanquish 295 is aluminum. This one right here is copper, nickel plated copper actually. So it's very heavy compared to this one, which is very, very light. And this would go with the copper one would go with a copper or nickel plated copper GPU water block as well as a nickel plated anything else that you may add to the list. All right. So, Never want to mix metals. Um, there's a, a whole science behind it, the electrochemical you know, reaction. Long story short, copper wins over aluminum. So if you have both in the same loop, copper will destroy the aluminum, the aluminum will become mush, and your whole loop is basically destroyed. You have to clean it all out and start from scratch, all right? So be very mindful of that. Planning is key when it comes to custom water cooling. So 
Let's start with number one. Choose your case wisely. One of my favorite cases is the O11 Dynamic Line, right? So I have the XL, which is actually right over here. It's my test bed system. It's so large, so easy to use that I use it to just swap out parts to test different GPUs, CPUs, all that stuff. This is the mid tower one, really good looking. It's not too big on the desk in my opinion, but it depends on your desk, obviously. And then the O11 Mini, which is really stylish and fun to work in. Now there's also larger towers. Uh, my main system is the Fantech 719. I've had it for a couple of years. I have a dual system build in that. It is so fun to build in that thing because of all of the space. So it really depends on what you're looking for, for the type of build you want. Um, some of the things I really look for in a, uh, a case is how easy is it to fill and drain a custom water cooling loop. Some cases like the Fantech 719 have that already built in a nice uh, fill port up top, a nice drain valve in, in the bottom drain port. So you can attach a drain valve to it. These lines for the O11 Dynamics, they don't have that. So you have to really pay attention to how you build out your loop. Are you going to attach a drain valve to maybe your pump or this uh, front, front distribution plate right here? So you have some options to play around with, but that's based on the third party support, not necessarily the case itself. Now, part of the whole reason why we go water cooling is to have a nice quiet system. And in order to achieve that, you need to make sure that you have the right size radiators to cool your CPU and or GPU or both, you know? So this one here is the EK Cool Stream. So let's go ahead and open this up to show you what it looks like. There's different thicknesses for radiators. So depending on what you're trying to cool will really determine the thickness and the length as well for the radiators you're going to need. This is also made of copper, so this is not compatible with this EK Fluid Gaming System, which is an all aluminum. So it has this has two three or this has two radiators, one 360 millimeter radiator and a 240 in the back side over here. Those are both aluminum. So if I were to add this one to the system, this system would then die very quickly because again, copper overtakes aluminum, right? But in all of my custom builds, I'll use things like this and I'll determine the thickness based on what exactly I'm cooling. So if I have like a 5950X and you know RTX 3090, this alone may not do it, which is also why EK added two radiators to this. So just kind of like do the math. Uh, EK does have a nice little sheet on their website for exactly what radiator sizes you may need based on how much you're trying to cool. So let's sum this up here. When you're looking into water cooling, one, do a lot of research. Take your time, do not rush into it at all because it is a decent amount of money you're gonna be spending and you could easily be spending money on the wrong things. Two, plan things out the best that you possibly can and be flexible with those plans because when you start getting into a system, um, you know, attaching tubing or hosing, you know, whatever type of tubing you choose to use, you're gonna to start to see different options. So just be flexible with it and have some fun with it. Um, three, I will always recommend to buy more fittings and tubing than you think you need uh, because you'll probably end up needing more anyway. Um, so we'll go through a bunch of these things. This is just gonna be the basics for this video here. Choose your case wisely based on your needs, you know, your own personal style, what features it has, you know, do you need a drain port? Do you need a fill port? Um, or are you just going to integrate those into your loop? And additionally, make sure you know what style of CPU and GPU water blocks you want and make sure you're not mixing metals with those either. So most times you're going to want to just build a copper custom loop. So just stick with that. And it's very easy to actually make sure that you have everything that's compatible if you're sticking with the same brand, if it's your first time doing this as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, so if you do have any questions on this, just put them down below. Uh, at the end of some of these future videos, I may do some you know, Q&A, so answer some of your questions down below right in the videos, especially a series like this where I'm gonna be you know, doing quite a lot of these because there is a lot to custom water cooling. Also check out some uh, people like uh, Bitwit and geez, Paul's Hardware, Jay's Two Cents. Uh, these three guys have done some wonderful videos in the past on some custom water cooling. And uh, we all have our own styles as well. So I'll do something one way, Jay will do something another way, Bitwit will do something another way. And um, even Linus Tech Tips, you know, they may spill things all over the place, but they tend to get the job done as well. So there's a lot of information out there and I hope that this brief video helps. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace.